Throughout the process of making this video, I can't help feeling this tremendous guilt. I wanted to finish writing by Thursday night so I could record on Friday. Now it's Saturday afternoon and I've just put the finishing touches on the script. And I'm sure I'll feel guilty about how slowly I'm working and how little I'm getting done through the rest of the process of putting the video together as well. And the irony of this guilt is not lost on me. Because this guilt is a symptom of the exact problem I want to talk about. We have become obsessed with productivity, with producing as much as we can, and it is unhealthy for us, for our society, and for our planet. Overproductivity and overproduction are burning us out and burning our planet up. A quick online search will reveal that there are many guides and resources out there on how to become more productive. There's a whole industry of hacks and tips from eating more efficiently to taking supplements to so many different ways to organize and tackle your to-do list. And while I appreciate that these guides will recommend taking a rest, very often this will just be to point out that taking a rest now can make you more productive in the future. But I would argue that rest can be virtuous and worthwhile in itself. There's a story that comes to my mind, sometimes spread online as the parable of the fisherman, though the source seems to be Heinrich Boll's anecdote concerning the lowering of productivity. In the story, a tourist happens across a fisherman who is resting in his boat around noon. The tourist remarks that it seems like fair weather for fishing, and the fisherman says that he already went fishing this morning and caught enough for the next two days, so he's done. The tourist sees this as a great opportunity for the fisherman. Just imagine, if he went out again and caught more fish and sold them, he could start earning some money. In a year, he could get a motor on the boat. In another year, he could get another boat and catch even more fish. He could hire crews and invest in a smokehouse and a pickling factory. And in a few years' time, he could become a real fishing tycoon. After the tourist says all this, the fisherman asks the tourist the pivotal question, And then what? And the tourist replies, And then... Without a care in the world, you could sit here in the harbor, doze in the sun, and look at the glorious sea. And the fisherman replies, But I'm already doing that. And if this were a Zen koan, we might say that the tourist was then enlightened. The thing is, even if the fisherman did all the tourists suggested and built a fishing empire, he would not be able to relax. He could always be pushing harder, growing more, incorporating more processes into the business, acquiring rivals, making more and more deals. It would never stop. So am I here to tell you that you should just stop doing whatever it is that you're doing and relax? To just be less productive, me not knowing your circumstances? Not quite. Let's look at another tale. In the excellent philosophical essay, Pyrrhus and Sinius, by Simone de Beauvoir, we get this exchange between the two characters. Plutarch tells us that one day Pyrrhus was devising projects of conquest. We are going to subjugate Greece first, he was saying. And after that, said Sinius, we will vanquish Africa. After Africa, we will go on to Asia. We will conquer Asia Minor, Arabia. And after that... We will go on as far as India. After India? Ah, said Pyrrhus, I will rest. Why not rest right away, said Sinius. But instead of taking the side of Sinius, Beauvoir indicates that resting without having something to contrast that rest with is mundane, that to live is to act. She says a lot more than that, and I definitely recommend giving the whole essay a read, but that's kind of beside my point right now. But what is my point? I guess I might put it this way. I want you to be less guilty about not being able to get everything done that you want to get done, or that society expects you to get done. We have an unhealthy obsession with maximizing productivity at any cost, and I think we need to take some time every now and then to stop and ask ourselves why we're doing the things we're doing. I mean... Who benefits from all this unexamined productivity? Consider this. Wages have remained fairly stagnant, despite labor productivity skyrocketing in recent decades. And I don't know about you, but I highly doubt corporate executives are working thousands of times harder than the rest of us to justify their earnings. 
Things become even clearer when we look at who is pushing for the rollout of various types of productivity monitoring. There is apparently a huge fear among employers that workers will be less productive if they aren't being constantly monitored and micromanaged. Or maybe the fear is that we'll start thinking about what we're doing. Or worse, that we might find the time to do something really radical if our noses aren't pushed up against the grindstone. But this overproductivity isn't just an individual problem. The very nature of our modern capitalism is that for a company to succeed, it must focus on producing more and more, with little care for the effects of what they are producing, and whether it is actually doing good in the world. That's why we get such practices as fast fashion and planned obsolescence, with all of the waste that comes with it. A company can never be satisfied that it has produced enough of a product for everyone's needs and then slow down to a maintenance level. Investors demand that more products must be sold, new markets must be found, or the company will die out. And it's not just materials and products getting overproduced and wasted. Labor is going to waste and overproduction as well. One aspect of this is what David Graeber calls bullshit jobs. Millions of people are working in positions that they can't even justify the existence of. We keep adding extra layers of middle management to corporate structures, giving them ever larger teams of corporate lawyers, and trying to sell each other more useless junk just to increase the amount of economic activity going on so we can further line the pockets of people that could already afford to buy anything they could reasonably want. And aside from these bullshit jobs, we also have these bullshit aspects making their way into necessary jobs. One of my pet peeve examples is prior authorizations, a time-consuming process where doctors have to convince insurance companies that their patients actually need the medications and procedures that they are recommending. A more mundane example is the endless deluge of time-wasting meetings that are pervasive in so many workplaces. And almost every public-facing employee is told in some way to push more products and services. According to the existential perspective theory of burnout, one of the biggest causes of burnout is the feeling that your work isn't making an impact. The feeling that we are making a positive difference in the world is a social need and a crucial part of our self-actualization. And when our efforts are being pushed towards these bullshit tasks, and we are unable to see meaning in what we are doing. We lose the will to put in the effort, and we burn out. And our ability to do the things we see as impactful is hindered by this need to hustle, to make more money doing meaningless work, to run the rat race of what is expected of us. But nobody should have to reach a certain threshold of productivity in order to justify their existence. We could all live comfortably with much less work, especially if we would make things that last, take basic steps to live more sustainably, and build strong communal ties to share what labor does need doing. I'm not advocating for a world with less production and less work just because I think we all need to slow down and relax, although some of us may very well choose to do that and that's perfectly valid. I'm advocating for a world where we do less in service of this machine that we find ourselves ensnared in, so that we can put our efforts towards our own projects, the things we really want to do with our lives, and things that really matter. And I want all of us to be able to take a minute now and then to figure out what that is. And I want you to always remember that your self-worth is not about what you get done in a day. The system is always pushing you to be unsatisfied with how much you do. Tying your self-worth to productivity means you'll be pushed into dissatisfaction with who you are, and that just compounds the problem. Even if, in the grand scheme of things, there is some legitimate case that you don't do enough, I want you to know you are enough. And if you don't believe me, let's do a little thought experiment. Think of somebody in your life that you cherish. Now ask yourself, is the reason you cherish that person because they are an extremely productive person that gets everything on their to-do list done every day? Is it because they're the best go-getter in the firm? I would wager not. You probably cherish that person for some very different reasons than that. 
and they probably cherish you not because of your productivity but because of something else that they see in you explore that that sense of companionship and community and love for each other that's where we can find self-worth and if you don't have that if you don't have anyone to cherish or who cherishes you then i urge you to go out and find a community we are social creatures we can't survive as islands no matter how much we get done in a day Thank you so much for watching. Now, go out and make the world a better place, as I know you will.